probability of an event is going to be a number between 0 and 1 that gives the long-term likelihood that the event occurs. The closer the number is to 1, the more likely the event is. When a weatherman says that there's a 10% chance of snow, what he's actually saying is that there's a 0.1 probability that snow occurs. In this case, it probably is not going to snow. However, if he predicts a 0.9 probability, a 90% chance, then you should probably stay indoors. Probability does occur everywhere. There's a chance that this will happen. I probably will get this done. What we're going to talk about is how to study this mathematically. So we need some terminology. An experiment is an activity that has an observable result. Every possible result of the experiment is called an outcome. The set of all possible outcomes is the experiment sample space. Finally, an event is a given subset of the sample space. To see what these words mean, let's take a look at an example. The experiment is going to be a description of whatever it is we're looking at. In this case, we're going to draw a single card from a deck. The nine of diamonds, which flipped up here, is an outcome because it's one particular instance of the experiment. All the possible outcomes are going to make up the sample space, so it's going to be just any one of the 52 cards in the deck. The events can be anything. They're just going to be some subset of the sample space. So we describe this in words, like a red card is drawn. The seven of hearts would be an instance of this event, but ten of spades is not an instance. Neither is the three of clubs. The outcomes are just going to be some of the events. And if we describe it in words, it'll be particular events. Because the events are sets, we can manipulate them just as we manipulate regular sets. So we can talk about the union of two events. That'll be every outcome that's in either or both sets. The intersection will be the ones that are in both, and the complement will be the ones that are not in the event. Two events are mutually exclusive if their intersection is empty. As a quick example, if the experiment is rolling a die and looking at the number, then the events I rolled a 1 and I rolled a 6 are going to be mutually exclusive. For a deeper example, let's take a look at this experiment here. The experiment is, I have two quarters and three nickels, and I toss them, and then record the results. The first thing that we have to decide is how am I going to actually record these results? In other words, what do the outcomes look like? One way to write them down is to just write down exactly what we see. So put quarters first and nickels second, and then heads and tails, depending on what's on the coin. Once we have a way of writing down the outcomes, the sample space is just all the possibles. With this description, the sample space will be these 12 events. This is not the only way you can write down the outcomes. We could actually write them down as a pair of numbers, where the first number is the number of heads in the quarters and the second number is the number of heads in the nickels. In this case, the sample space will look somewhat different, but it's going to have the same number of elements, and each element will correspond to one of the elements we had written down before. Because events can take on any form, we just have to look at one particular example. Which outcomes have more heads on the nickels than on the quarters? To describe the event, we just have to find the outcomes in the sample space that match the event. In the one description, it would be these ordered pairs of numbers. In the other description, it would be these outcomes here. 